there are 107 commanders in rise of kingdoms and i don't think that that inherently is a problem with the game personally i think they can continue to release commanders pretty much forever indefinitely and people will still get excited about that but it does imply other problems that i do want to talk about in this video so grab a drink and a snack because today we're going to talk a little bit about rise of kingdoms and some of the problems that i see coming down the pipeline in the next couple of months or years but first what's going on guys cheers now i'm just going to say this right up front okay no i don't think rise of kingdoms is dying i made a video about that a few weeks or like a month or two ago and yes i do still think that rise of kingdoms is the best city builder war strategy game on mobile especially because the pc client is so buttery smooth and incredible and yes i am still optimistic about the future of the game because of how good the new graphics look and i'm honestly dreading going back to home kingdom after this kvk because i just don't i don't want to go back the game it just looks so good i've even had people commenting on some of my newer videos who are new to the game and they're like oh my god why does your game look so much better than mine so i think their strategy of implementing new graphics to appeal to new players is going to pay off in the future when this is fully implemented so all in all i am still very optimistic for the future of rise of kingdoms kind of more so now than ever but there are still at least two problems that i want to talk about in this video and the first one is one that i alluded to before okay um the other day i noticed that my total accumulated commander list had reached 100 we are in the triple digits and there are still seven commanders that i do not have my hands on two of which are not in the international version of the game yet william wallace will probably be coming out within a day or two of this video releasing and then of course we have the mightiest governor for cpo i'm probably not going to be competing for this i don't see a reason for me personally to get my hands on cpo emilianus but that's besides the point if you include these seven commanders there are 107 commanders in rise of kingdoms and of course a vast majority of these are legendary commanders right because if we just whittle this down to just the purples greens and blues there's only 28 here okay so that means we have 79 legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms which is kind of crazy and the problem with this is actually really nuanced right it's not just the fact that there's a lot of commanders in the game and that more are coming down the pipeline presumably because again i like when new commanders come into the game and so it's kind of a double-edged sword right because over the last seven almost eight months now um we have seen lots of new commanders come into the game right but the last one that i personally cared about was herman prime and i got my hands on him on january 2nd january 2nd right now i'm recording this video a little bit early it is july 26th i don't know when i'm going to post this because i'm going to be going away for the weekend how do i have 26 million barbarian kills with him what that doesn't make any sense to me anyway August is quickly approaching which means it's been like eight months since there's been a commander in the game that I care about now of course the game doesn't revolve around me who cares what I think right who cares what I think we have seen the release of two new engineering commanders which has definitely gained a lot of traction over the last eight months and many end game whale players are using these as a seventh March which I think is working out really well which is really nice I personally I simply don't really like the ranged combat in rise of kingdoms like that's just my subjective opinion I just just don't think it's very good and, and so I'm not that interested in investing in ranged commanders who knows in the next six months if they release even more ranged commanders that are even more power crept then I probably will not have a choice but to invest in range at some point but it's not something that I am personally interested in and I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section below are you excited for more ranged combat in the future I really have a hard time getting a read on this I think new players kind of are interested in ranged and I think that old players that find the game a little bit stale are interested in ranged but I think everyone in the middle probably doesn't really care that much I think that the open field combat is good as it is in rise of kingdoms which is why the game is so popular but that's a topic for a whole other video my point is that we got Herman Prime and Ashurbanipal in January okay and I was excited for those commanders especially for Herman Prime which is why I expertise him like pretty quickly after but then we got leadership in ranged uh, Lapu Lapu unfortunately is a city garrison commander mostly so I don't use him and then we got Belisarius Prime and Eleanor and some players are using Eleanor to good effect in certain garrison situations which is kind of surprising to me I'm happy to see that people are getting used out of her and again Belisarius is pretty good for swarming things down but personally I didn't find that he was a must-have commander he's kind of niche I at this point at the time of recording this I'm like tempted to invest in him just because I'm bored. Okay. And that is the first problem that we're going to talk about here in the video. And I know I've been rambling a little bit before we even got here, but the problem is that we, in the last eight months, I personally, and I think probably many of you, um, have not seen compelling commander releases where you want to invest in them. And even if we take a look 
at William Wallace and uh you know Scipio Emilianus William Wallace it, look look he's going to be a great commander in the open field I'm sure people are going to use him with with Liu Che and perform really really well there but you know seeing some of the early you know screenshots of the battle reports with William Wallace and Liu Che from the Chinese servers in Rise of Kingdoms I I, I don't it's not like blowing my mind right like people are posting five and ten to one trades with William Wallace Liu Che which is great but in my last KVK I got plenty of you know five to one eight to one ten to one trades with Liu Che and Alex right so it's like you know even if it's even if William Wallace is slightly better than the Liu Che Alex pairing I don't know if it's going to be like a must-have commander right like if we look at what we have on William Wallace there's no massive AoE there's no debuff and so like if we just take him at face value like in his own right he's a very good commander but I don't know if he's a must have commander. And so if we look back at the most recent, what I would argue is the most recent must have commander, we are looking at Herman prime, right? And again, that was eight months ago. So in a world where, um, you know, there's been a lot of commander releases in the last eight months, but in my mind, they've been a little bit lukewarm, right? Like they've been fine. I think William Wallace is the most exciting that we've seen in the last eight months since Herman prime. But for the most part, I would say that they're like kind of average. Okay. And they have their places. They have their roles. I'm not saying all these commanders are bad, right? Plenty of players are using them, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of players that are in the end game are in a similar position as me where they haven't invested in any anything in eight months and this is a good thing by the way for free-to-play players who have just been hoarding sculptures for eight months which is great and especially like with Herman Prime you don't even need to expertise him right you can get him to 5551 and you'll still have a really solid open field archer commander right like Herman Prime is great even if you budget build him at 5551 so in a world where free-to-play players can save their sculptures for eight months that's amazing right because then they can keep up with the meta and keep up with the must-have commanders but I personally am a little bit bored of all the latest commander releases right and i'm sure many other people are in a similar boat however as i mentioned before there's over a hundred commanders in the game right and so we run into this issue where i as a player of almost six years at this point am bored and want more new commanders i think a new player to the game looks at 108 commanders and says oh my god this is impossible to ever catch up i will never ever ever catch up and that's kind of true right like i mean look most of these commanders that were released over the past few years are useless at this point right like they have not aged well you look at commanders like ramses you look at commanders like cyrus you look at commanders like artemisia like i'm i'm not saying these commanders are useless useless but when you're building a five army lineup and even a seven army lineup are you going to be looking at a lot of these commanders right like you're not you just simply are not even commanders that aged decently like honda like he was good as a secondary for a long time you're just not seeing these commanders in the field anymore and so you know the reality is that for new players yes there's over 100 commanders but really there's only like a dozen that matter in the open field right maybe 15 if we're being generous so this is really intimidating for new players um when it really doesn't have to be because like I said there are so many commanders here that you don't need but again there is still that intimidation factor and on top of that a lot of the most useless commanders are the older ones they are the commanders that you get in kvk one and two right these are commanders that you start the game with you you see that they're legendary and you look at Freddy and he's legendary and you look at Liu Che and you say he's legendary well clearly they must be on the same you know playing field and the reality is they're not like Frederick is better than epic commanders but he is like many 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 tiers behind the newest commanders in the game and so what I think is that there is not a great transition from the early game to the end game and even if you speed up the amount of time from a new server opening to getting into season of conquest even if you speed that time up uh, you have to also speed up the number of sculptures players are getting the number of you know speed ups that they get for research and the amount of uh, resources that they're getting and all that other stuff if you want to use that as an argument to you know say that new players are getting a better experience and i don't necessarily think that we have to like speed players to end game right like i think kvk1 is great kvk2 and 3 are beloved by many players many players are actually really unhappy with some of the recent changes to the migration system that are coming down the pipeline because they like to replay kvk2 and 3 over and over and over again and lilith is kind of removing the ability for them to do that and like i said in my video where i talked about that that is there's a good reason for them to do that and i do support them protecting the new player experience but we have kvks one through three that players love and so i don't think we should be rushing new players through those i think they should be able to enjoy those kvks and enjoy what the game has to offer in the early game but what's important is that they can make progress on their commanders and their gear and all that other stuff that will matter in the end game right if you're in kvk2 and you max out alexander the great 
well yes he's great in kvk2 he's going to be good in kvk3 but when you get to kvk4 like yes you can use him for Liu Che. he was one of my best performing marches but we are already seeing his position challenged once again with William Wallace right I think a lot of players might consider benching Alexander the Great again for like a second or third time for William Wallace right and so like there was this brief window of like maybe you know six months or or nine months where Alexander the Great was you know something that you would often see in the open field and you will probably continue to see that like I said I don't know if William Wallace is going to be like twice as good as, Al as Al Alexander the Great right like I don't think that's going to be the case I think he'll be a little bit better maybe but I don't see it being like abundantly clear that he's going to be infinitely better I could be wrong I could be completely wrong about that but you know we're already seeing a world where we had a revival of a kvk2 commander for a little bit and now he's already kind of fading away or he could possibly be fading away already right and so you know in a world where there's just no good transition from early game to end game I feel like that's a big problem right especially when there's over 100 commanders in the game and so we have this unique situation where I as an old player want more game breaking meta commanders in the end game because I'm bored um but the new players want fewer of them because they're already having a hard time catching up to where I am at because I've been playing for six years and we look at the museum and I think the museum the intention here was to kind of solve that problem and you know I think they did a decent job with some of these buffs right um like you know obviously Mehmed is famous for having a great buff um YSG has a decent buff Minamoto has a really good buff and you know Alexander the Great I would say has a pretty good buff as well um Guan Yu I love this new relic man I instantly became way better in, in Sunset Canyon than Lost Canyon when I grabbed this just instantly it was awesome but the truth is that like the museum relics I mean a lot of new players are having a hard time getting their hands on the exhibit coins and on the relic coins right and like yeah they appear in bundles but like not everyone's buying bundles right and so if you want to point at the museum as a as a sort of solution to that problem well then we need to get these currencies in the hands of free-to-play players and new players in abundance right like you should get a boatload of these as like a reward for completing kvk or something like that like kvk one two and three like some of the rewards should probably be these exhibition coins and relic coins even if you know let's say there's a uh you get a certain amount for winning and a certain amount for losing maybe it's a little bit less right like that that would be fine if you want to make that an incentive to perform well on those kvks but like at the time of recording this um it just seems like a lot of new players don't even care about the museum system because they don't see this as a realistic like pro progression right like they don't see a way to progress through this system that makes sense for them and 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 like I totally get that right and you know it's a little bit weird too because we're looking at the museum system and saying well these are the buffs to the older commanders and it's like you know in other games like if we look at you know World of Warcraft Call of Duty like any of these other games that have a semi-competitive PvP mode I know that's a joke for World of Warcraft but you know what I'm saying you see like the developers will you know buff and nerf different um, abilities different classes different guns different things like that and if you look at League of Legends for example League of Legends has seasons where like different you know heroes and champions are much better in one season than they are in another because they get buffed and nerfed and things move around and you know that isn't behind a currency system right like if they're going to put a buff for Morgana in League of Legends or if they're gonna buff you know the warrior class in, in World of Warcraft you don't have to spend a currency to get that buff you know what I mean which is why the museum system falls kind of on deaf ears sometimes because it's like this is a buff to an old commander but it's like if an old commander needs a buff why don't you just buff the commander like why don't you just increase the stats right like just just actually go in and just be like okay look Frederick is actually not performing to our expectations for a legendary commander we're going to give him 20 percent defense and five percent health or something like that right like if you if you recognize that these old commanders aren't as good as the new commanders don't lock all of their buffs behind currencies that players have a hard time getting their hands on because then it's not really a buff it's just another progression system that they have a hard time getting through right so I think this is the first kind of you know uh, paradoxical problem that rise of kingdoms is going to continue to run into over time unless they implement some sort of fix to this right they can keep releasing new commanders and I'm going to keep maxing them because I like new commanders I like when the meta changes right that's the problem with the last eight months is the meta hasn't really moved at all like that's kind of the truth and maybe William Wallace will shake that up a little bit but like for the last eight months I've kind of used the same thing and that is a little bit boring and like the the main progress for a lot of players right now is the armament system which is literally just a roulette wheel and I don't like like I you don't really have control over progressing through a roulette system anyway so I'm not that interested in even discussing that system on the channel to be honest with you guys so that's kind of the unique situation that I think they're in with the commanders they need to release more new meta changing commanders for the old players that are bored 
but there's still to the time recording that, and I've been saying this for years now probably three years that they need to implement a better system to progress from early game to end game and we still have not seen that yet right and so it's a double-edged sword the new commanders make it harder for old play for new players to catch up to old players but old players need more new commanders to stay invested and to stay you know there's this that's an exciting new toy to play with right that's what these are I see these as digital action figures okay and so I don't have a solution to that problem but I definitely think that it is a problem and will continue to be in the future now the second problem because remember I, I think the title of the video references two problems in the game and the second one is kind of um I don't know how to actually put this but kind of a lack of content like um okay in the past three years we've seen a new civilization release every summer right we first saw the introduction of the Vikings in 2021 in May and then in June of 2022 we saw Egypt and then in July of 2023 we saw Greece and my prediction over the last few months has been that we will see a new civilization either in June or July of this year and at the time of posting this there has been no word of a new civilization now we did see back in September the developers did tease screenshots of what the next civilization is going to be a lot of people think it's going to be the Mayans or Aztecs or something like that which is cool but where is it right where is it why didn't why hasn't it come yet in the summer now I could be a little bit pre preemptive here right because if you notice Vikings were May Egypt was June Greece was July and so the new Civ could be coming in August right like mid to end August that could be possible uh, the other reason that I think it could be coming in August is because and I'm just going to be honest here that is when the release of Age of Empires mobile is supposed to happen right and so if we look at the trend of new civilizations saying that okay it's every 13 months then that lands it in August and that also lands it alongside the Age of Empires mobile global release which I mean I actually don't even know if this date is actually locked in this is from reddit it could be delayed even farther right like I don't actually know um I don't know if the devs for Age of Empires mobile have officially revealed the uh release date you guys can let me know in the comment section below but it could be the case that Rise of Kingdoms is you know not only would a new civilization line up with August based on historical data but also they could use it as a moment to kind of like overshadow the release of Age of Empires Mobile, right? Age of Empires Mobile is probably going to be a competitor to Rise of Kingdoms. I don't know, you know, how successful that game is going to be. Obviously, Age of Empires Mobile or Age of Empires as a franchise is extremely popular historically, but I don't know how many Age of Empires players are going to enjoy a mobile version of the game. I think that's been kind of one of the biggest criticisms of that. Regardless, I do still think that Age of Empires Mobile is going to be extremely popular. And I think that Rise of Kingdoms might want to strategically have a massive ad campaign during the release of that game to kind of prevent players from leaving Rise of Kingdoms or to pull more new players into Rise of Kingdoms as opposed to Age of Empires Mobile and kind of, you know, just outcompete them in that space. And, you know, I, this is all speculation. I have no idea, right? I don't know if these two companies like each other or hate each other or if they don't even care about each other. I suspect that they are keeping up with what each other are doing because they are going to be probably competing in the same market. But it could be possible that Rise of Kingdoms is holding on to that new civilization to drop it, you know, to basically overshadow the release of another competitor game. That is totally possible the other thing that they could be doing to you know delay the release of new of a new civilization is that there are the new graphics right there's the new graphics in the game and so that probably put a little bit of a delay on the release of a new civ because they have to most likely design the new civ for the new graphics right now we haven't seen any updates to the actual city graphics here so i don't know if that's actually going to change but it's possible that they want to implement you know like for example every time there's a new civ they release a new epic and legendary commander and if they are going to update like the actual map models here like especially the models for the commanders themselves like this doesn't really fit with the new graphics right like the new graphics look much better than this little sprite model right so if they're going to update the on map models they probably don't want to make have the art team make map models for the old graphics and the new graphics right so it could be the case that there was just conf the, a conflict there with the release of the new graphics they're not going to put a new civ in the game that looks like the old graphics right so that's possible that's another reason why we could see a delay in the new civilization but i personally I've definitely noticed that there was a lot of excitement around the Vikings. There was a lot of excitement around the Egypt. There was a lot of excitement around Greece. And this summer feels like there's just been like a vacuum. Like we don't, wh where's the, where's the new thing? Where's the new stuff to get excited about? Right. Um, when we saw Greece come out, we saw like these big, uh, you know, CGI animation, like movies basically that they posted on their YouTube channel. And that was really cool. I really, really liked that. We saw that similar things with Egypt and Vikings, right? So like there's a lot of promotional material 
that comes out around the time of a release of a new civilization that is exciting it's new it's fresh it just it feels like a big update to the game even though new civilizations don't typically like historically they don't really move the needle for the meta they don't really move the needle in terms of like they don't bring along like brand new events or anything like that like they they, they have new events but like they're not actually new in terms of what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis it's still like grinding barbarians and collecting an item and then exchanging the item for event rewards or things like that right so what i'm saying is like it's not like the new civ necessarily changes how we play the game or it doesn't necessarily change you know what we do in rise of kingdoms but it does add a breath of fresh air it adds something new it shows us that the devs are excited about the future of the game and again we already know that there was a new civilization coming so it's not like it's not happening it's just that we expected it to happen this month or last month and it didn't happen and it feels a little bit weird to have this awkward radio silence of hearing nothing about it right and so i don't know where the new civ is obviously we know it will be coming at some point if it's not going to come in august then i think it will come probably in either december january or february right if they go a whole year like they just completely skip a year without a new Civ, that would be really disheartening for me as a player because again like there is so much excitement around that and i like to get excited for the new Civ releases right even if it doesn't really change the game that much i find that I get excited for it and it brings in a lot of new players which i think rise of kingdoms you know any game wants new players right like it would help me as a content creator like that's great for me but like in just in general more people playing the game is good for the health of the game and that's i mean that i care about the game a lot and that's what i want to see and so i'm sure they have a plan or a strategy with the release of the new civ whether it's you know gonna be in august for all the reasons that i've already mentioned or if it's just being delayed because of the new graphics and then they're going to drop it for the holiday season which is typically another big marketing push right i find with rise of kingdoms it seems like summer is a bigger marketing push than holiday which is a bit different than most industries most industries that are you know direct to consumer sales you know you think of like nike and apple and like all these other companies like they make most of their money in holiday season because that's when people buy products rise of kingdoms you know they do have a big holiday push but uh it's not nearly as big in, from what i've seen at least it, as the summer months right and so you know them releasing a new sieve in the holiday season would be a little bit weird in in my opinion unless it's going to be like a winter themed thing i have no idea but they could do that right uh and hopefully they don't wait a whole other year to release it in summer of 2025 because that would be unfortunate they could do it early in summer like like early may but i i don't know i hope that we don't have to wait that long for a new sieve but the second again the second problem right now with rise of kingdoms is that there does seem to be like this kind of you know radio silence in terms of like new sieves and new content in my opinion right and and again like we did just get the new graphics and so like it's weird to say that because i am excited about the new graphics and i'm like probably one of the most excited people for the new graphics i've been very positive about this change so much so that people think that lilith is like paying me i've seen these insane comments people think that pe like lilith is paying me um to say good things about the graphics or like that because I'm a sponsored creator that I have to be like overwhelmingly positive about this. No, I've been extremely excited for the new graphics since before I was even a sponsored creator, right? Like they announced the new graphics in like September of last year and I wasn't really a sponsored creator until October. So like I have been very consistently positive about the new graphics for a long time now. And like, look in this video, I'm talking about problems about the game. And, and so even as a sponsored creator, I have no problem discussing issues that I have with the game. Right. And if I thought the graphics were one of them, I would tell you straight up, but it's not, I'm really excited for the new graphics. So it's weird to say that like, we are in a point where like there is not, or it feels like there's not new content, but that is currently how it feels to me, at least as a sort of older player. Right. And so hopefully we see the new civilization soon. Um, I don't know again, when that's coming, why it's delayed, what is what's happening there. Hopefully we see it soon. I want to see it soon, but I think the lack of a new civ and the lack of like meta breaking commanders has made the last eight months for me, at least feel a little bit stale. Um, and you know, I just, I'm curious to know what rise of kingdoms has up their sleeve to solve these problems. If they're working on these, I'm sure they're working on these problems. They know about all this stuff. Right. Um, so I'm really interested to see what the future holds for rise of kingdoms, but we've kind of been in like this weird, like transition period. It feels like 
where as an old player i feel like i haven't seen anything that really gets me excited in a while anyway guys that's pretty much going to do it for this video if you enjoyed this type of video where i just kind of discuss my thoughts and feelings on the game drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts on these things do you think that you feel the same way as me or do you feel completely different do you feel like there's the game's never been in a better spot this is great for new players that there haven't been new meta breaking commanders like let me know in the comment section below what you guys are are thinking and feeling right now do you think we need a new sieve does it matter at all to you i think it matters a lot but maybe i'm completely in like the minority there and while you're down there of course subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace